Hey guys, just gonna be going on the chat apps, just preaching the gospel, just making this real quick beforehand, just a warning. We're seeing the world how it is. There's a a lot of adultery. I will block out all the nudity, but there is going to be sexual content. People scream things, yell things. We're seeing the world for how it is, but yeah, we're just going to go on there, just preach the gospel, just bring the good news to the lost, and just glorify Christ. Jesus Christ is the, Jesus light, Christ that is is the light that has come into the darkened world, the darkness of this world, the fallen world, which is sin sin that rules in this world and rules by the enemy but because we all go after sin we fall after sin and why we all have to die but what we see going on in this world today and why there's so much wickedness it's embarrassing you need to repent and if we give in to god if we humble ourselves we will be saved because we're saved by grace through faith because it's just by believing if we accept if we give into him if we humble ourselves and go to him because he says in Matthew chapter 5 that blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven because he's talking to his people. So if we humble ourselves, give in to him, have to understand what poor is. Hey, it's good to come across to you again on here preaching the gospel. I just pray that you would repent. I pray that Christ would rule your life, that you would give in to him, that you wouldn't have to keep coming on here being a, a slave of the enemy, a slave giving into lust, into adultery, and helping people follow after that because there is gonna be a way of wages for what we do. And if we're living in sin, helping people commit adultery every single day, when we die and we face God, you will have to reap what you sow and you will have to take those consequences of sin. And that's why he matches me up with you every single day to remind you that he sees. It's not just me, but he sees and he knows. And he, that's why we can't ever get away from him on the chat apps. It doesn't matter. God sees all things. He knows all things. And don't think that we can ever get away from him. Because if we do, then that's prideful. That's, that's the darkness, the wickedness, the foolishness of this world that thinks that the Heavenly Father doesn't see all things, doesn't know all things, and thinks that they can't even get away from Him on the chat apps, and think that they continue doing the same thing, evil, wickedness, lust, helping people go after adultery and not have to answer it, not to send His people to show and shine light on the darkness because God is the light. He says that He is the light of the world that has come into the darkened world. And we see this in Matthew chapter 5. He says, for you are the light of the world because Christ is with them. You have to understand it's the people. Christ was talking to his people. So now that we can be people of God, we have to be his per person. We have to believe. Once we believe and we accept him, then we are a child of God. Anybody can say, oh yeah, we're all children of God. That's false. We're all born into sin. We're all fallen by Adam. So through that sin, we're children of disobedience. So we have that corruptible seed. So we need to be reborn. So once we're reborn, we're brought into God's family, grafted in, and then we're a child of God. And then we're a child of God because we have the light. We have the Holy Spirit living inside of us, which is Christ himself. It's his spirit because he is the light of the world. He's the light of the world that came into the darkness and shined convicted men. He says he came to bring war, not peace, and that's why people don't like him. That's why he's the only one that shows them their sin, shines light in the darkness, which you being the light of the world, if we give in to Christ, that's what it is. It's accepting him. If we give in to him, we have the light of, the, of Christ living inside of us, so then we won't have to live in darkness. That's what it is. It's not having to be bound in chains of lust, chains of fornication, chains of adultery. It doesn't mean that it's not going to happen with it. That's the difference. As you now have a mediator, you now have the one who will help you, who will aid you, who will guide you. Because the lukewarm, the, the new age church out there will try and explain and try and tell you that it's okay to sin and get away with it. That, you know, everybody just sins, so just to embrace it. But the difference is with those who truly have Christ, those who are truly walking with Christ, they don't practice it anymore. It doesn't mean that it might not happen. The difference is, is when it happens, we now have a mediator who is with us, who helps us, forgives us. And that's the difference of it. Because this world will try and say, oh, look at this new age. Look at this these false Christians over here. They think that they're so perfect, but that's not the gospel. The gospel is, is there's one perfect person is strive to be perfect. Perfect, And the only way we can strive to be perfect 
is with Christ because David said in Psalm that he will not be satisfied. He will not be righteous and perfect until he's with him in his likeness. It's because while we're in the flesh, while we're in sin and wickedness, we're going to fight it every day. We're going to fall short every day. That's why in Matthew chapter 6, the, the Lord's prayer is daily. Lord, please forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us because it's give us our daily bread. So it's daily, but he gives it to us. And that's the difference. It's no longer being bound to the chains of lust, being bound to it and wanting to practice it anymore. Those chains are broken by the chain breaker, which is Christ. The difference is, is when it happens to happen, if it happens, we, we go by if it happens to happen, not practice, we immediately repent and we're forgiven. And, and that's the difference. And that's what the Father is just trying to show us. He's trying to show us what true love is, which true love is, is in Christ. And just like in his gospel, he says, I mean, you evil, when even, anybody who's evil can persecute with evil. But when you belong to me and you have the spirit, you have the fruit and you show love when they persecute with evil, that's the difference. That's the true love. That's the standard. That's the light and the darkness. And that's what we can now have by Christ who, who gives that to us if we accept it. It's being broken, being completely changed, but by him, if we give into him, if we accept him. And that's the difference. It's just the, the difference of, of just understanding why we have to go through sin, why we have to go through hardships, why we have to go through struggles. It's because of, of sin. Sin was brought into the world. So because of that, we have to go through hardships. We have to go through pain. And I knew that I was going to come across with you again because God always matches me up with you to remind you and whoever you have on here that you need to repent and give in to God because if we don't repent and give into Christ, we will have to pay for those sins. Life itself tells us that there's wages. That's the law. Steal, murder, kill, hurt somebody. That's the only standard we have for God. We all fall short. So because of that, we have to pay for those wages, which is sin and death. And when we embrace that, we're going to have that. So when we live in sin, like you are on here every day, embracing it, you're going to get the wages. But God is right there. He says, if you just come to me, if you just ask, if you just humble yourself and forgive, you will be saved. And that's what it is. They don't want forgiveness. It's the reprobate mind. And they're going to have nothing left to say. There's going to be nothing left to say to God. It all comes down to the forgiveness. It all comes down to salvation. But repenting, as soon as you get there and as soon as you get with Christ, they don't want to have anything to do with it. They want to embrace the sin. They want to embrace wickedness. They want to continue after lust and after the adultery. So when they die and they face God, there's going to be nothing left to say. They're going to have to embrace that so do that when you walk in wickedness when you walk in lust when you walk in adultery and you want to embrace that and you want to deny god and when you die and you face him do not call out to him do not attempt to go after him because you had your moment you want to embrace sin you want to live in sin you want to live in lust then embrace the consequences that comes with it. Let that be your God. God says, oh, you want your idols, your lust, your fornication? Let them help you. That's the difference. Go after them then. You want to embrace that sin? You want to embrace that lust? Embrace this fire and brimstone that comes with it too. Or embrace the one who forgives us. Because that's the hard truth. Because nobody wants to listen. So you're going to get some fire and brimstone. Because there is a, con there is a consequence. There is a wage for it and thinking that you can come on here live in lust live in fornication showing your privates to whoever comes across it doesn't matter if it's elderly people doesn't matter if it's children that's what life has come down to that's what we want to embrace so when you die and you face god embrace the sin that comes with it when you want to live in lust and don't want to care but want to embrace it and love it and skip over Christ, skip over the forgiveness, the redemption for the blood that he shed for us. Then when you die and you face him, embrace it. There's going to be nothing left to say. He's going to bring this up. He's going to show us. He's going to show us all these times that even on the chat apps, you couldn't get away from Christ. Is the only one that's given to us by which we can be saved. Muhammad won't come on the chat apps to try and save you. Shiva won't come on the chat apps to try and save you. Kali won't, but Christ will. So when we die and we face God and he brings us up. And he shows that even in these times, even on the chat apps, when we want to embrace lust, want to embrace adultery, but his forgiveness is there and we don't want to take it, then there's going to be nothing left to say. He's going to give it to us. He's going to give it to you. There's going to be a consequence. There's going to be a wage. So when we live after that, go after that and think, oh, yeah, life is just for us to have fun without the consequences, then we die and we face him, embrace it, give in to it. I'm talking about forgiveness by sins, by the blood of Christ. And how we don't have to be bound to sin. What did you say? Are you preaching right now? Yeah. 
Hey, amen, brother. Hey, that's what's up, man. Yeah. Hey, that's what's up, man. Hey. Hey, that's what's up. Hey, God bless you guys, man. Keep up the good work. Hey, I'll see, I'll see you guys in the kingdom, okay? Hey, God bless you. Right on. Hey, God bless you, man. Cool. Right on, guys. That's what's up. So if we're doing so, if we embrace lust, if we embrace sin, if we embrace fornication, if we want to embrace it, even on the chat apps, there's going to be nothing left to say. God is going to give you what you want. If you want to deny him, if you want to live in sin, if you want to hate him, then he will give you that. There'll be nothing left to say. If you want to come on here and beat your little meat, show your little penis to whoever comes across with pride and self-pride in yourself instead of giving into God, the one who died for you, then there's going to be nothing left to say. He is going to give you what you want, but he's also right there. It's by his forgiveness, his mercy, his goodness. If we humble ourselves, it's just like the thief on the cross, just like the lady who came and poured out her tears gave all that they can but but yet just called out to him it's romans 10 13 it's if you call upon the name of the lord you will be saved because what comes out of the mouth comes from the heart it's by the heart it's the thief on the cross that gave it in his heart asked by his heart it's by the lady who poured out all of her tears with and, and dumped the anointing oil on christ poured out her heart so you have to just give in your heart but if you want to keep your heart going after fornication after lust after the chat apps after wickedness then your heart will get the consequences it will get the wages so if we want to embrace that and just persecute and mock christ when you die and you face him do not call out to him embrace those sins if you're so proud so eager so ready to live in fornication live in lust deny god hating god then when you die and you face him do not call out to him and that's just what it is because most people will they will they're 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 lost spiritually but they care too much about what people think they care too much about going after their flesh instead of after the one who died for them because when they're in trouble they still call out to him when they die they're still going to call out to him and that's just what it is they don't call out to him now because they think oh you you know all you you christians think that you're so perfect or the lukewarm the mainstream has twisted and turned the gospel you guys think you're so perfect you're hypocrites instead of just getting into the gospel itself and seeing that that's not what it is at all it's just by believing it's by the one who actually cares for us who loves us who came down and died for us that's what it is we're all going to go through hardships all going to go through pain struggles god reigns on the just and the unjust the difference is is we now have someone christ who is there with us who will aid us guide us be there and we continue going after a joke, thinking that it's a big joke. And we die and we face him. Embrace the joke. You think it's a you think it's a joke? Then embrace it. You think it's a game? Embrace the sins. Then embrace it. But you can be free. You can be free in Christ if you just believe. If you just give into Him. That's what it is. It comes from the heart. You're saved by grace by Him through the faith. So if you just believe in Him, you'll be saved. Yeah, I'm actually on here preaching the gospel instead of laying in my bed, just coming across, mocking someone who's pre preaching the gospel. So you can sit there and do that, whatever you want with your hands, but understand that you're mocking the word of God. So when you die and you face God, embrace that mock that you just did. Yeah, embrace it. So, yeah, God bless you. I pray that you repent and turn from your sins and know that there's more to life than just coming on here and showing your privates to whoever comes across. So God bless you. You're running out of time. If you just believe, you will be saved. That's what it is. All they want to do is just mock. They want to watch. They'll watch from a distance and they'll mock and they'll persecute. They'll, they'll take it. They'll take it. They want. There's something deep inside of them that that wants to hear it, but their flesh won't let them. It's the pride. It's it's everything that Christ had warned us and told us about in these last days that was going to happen. Men would become lovers of themselves. That wickedness would be on the rise. So even when they hear a good gospel message. They want to take it to heart. There's something in their soul that wants to take it, but their flesh won't let them. It's because they love sin, and it's so sad, and, and we're running out of time. The wrath of God is just right around the corner. There is going to be a day of wrath. There is going to be a day of judgment. The church is about to leave, 
but you can be a part of that. You can be with him if you give in to him. And that's why he's trying to wake you up. He's trying to show you every day that we have, every breath is just his mercy because it's not God's will for men and women anywhere to perish, but to repent because there is a condemnation. There is a wage for sin and Christ paid that. So if we don't want to accept that gift of salvation, if we don't want to give in to the one whose blood is the only pure and righteous blood to cover our sins, the only name given to us, then we're going to have to embrace those sins ourselves. You're going to have to pay for those sins and there's going to be nothing left for you to pay. You can't pay. God's an eternal being, so your time is eternity and his wages. Yeah, no thanks. I don't want a private chat. I want. I would like you to repent and believe in the gospel so your soul doesn't burn in hell. And that's just what's sick. This world is so lost. It's so sad. It's the lust of this world, the lust of what true love is, because this world has twisted what true love is. They have no standard. They steal from our standard. They, the, all they steal is from the word of God and try and twist it and try and make it their own words because they say, oh, yeah, love is love. Love is not love. Love is not rape. Love is not murder. If some guy came down the street and, and raped them and said that it was love, they would not say that it's love because there is a standard of love and the world does not have that. But God is love. That's the standard. First John chapter four, verse eight says that God is love and it's by everything that he has done for us. It's by him coming off of his throne, dying for us, dying for the sins of the world, even though we don't deserve it. We deserve death. We hated him in his heart, but yet he still loves us. First Corinthians chapter 13 says that love is patient. Love is kind. It's never self-seeking, never self-boasting. Still stroking your little penis, I see. I hope that you repent. And that's everything that Christ has said and had, had shown us in the word and, and in our life if we give in to him. It's what true love is in this world when it does not know true love. It's been deceived. The image of, of marriage today is so perverted. It's the same with on these chat apps. It's so perverted because the world thinks that they have love, but they're so foolish or so blind. They're so deceived because they go after their their natural heart. The Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12, it says what might seem natural in their heart. They go after that natural way, that natural love, and they're deceived because they don't have the true eyes of God. But they could get those eyes of God if they give into Christ, if they believe he will give that to them. He will be there for them. Show them that they don't have to be on here. Don't have to be bound to lust. Don't have to be bound to fornication, bound to adultery. He will break those chains for you. He will wash you with your blood. He will forgive you. He will show love. He will show you mercy. Your life will be changed. If you give in to him, if you call out to him, you will be saved. You won't have to wake up coming on these chat apps. You won't have to go to sleep coming on the chat apps. You won't have to go away throughout the day giving in to those lusts, those urges of the flesh because Christ will make you free. But it's by the Son, only the Son, because whoever the Son sets free is truly free indeed. And that's why this world will persecute, they'll mock, they'll sit in their bed, they'll lay in their bed, and they'll mock, but they're not doing anything. They'll speak these words, oh yeah, how life is about this, and everybody should be doing this and doing things, And but they'll mock the one who's out there who's actually doing it while they're laying in their bed. It's typical, it's the world, it's all talk, it's all lukewarm, it's all naysay it's all tossed to and fro because they don't have the rock the salvation which is in christ because they're foolish they're perishing the word of god says that what might seem natural in a, in a man's heart yet in the end leads to death because what's natural is they think that there's no god because psalm chapter 14 verse 1 says that a fool says in their heart there is no god so that's why they're acting like how they are that's why they're going about how they are and that's why they've been brainwashed and warped to think like this because they're foolish at heart because they've been deceived and they'd rather go after their lustful own selfish ways instead of after the gospel message of Christ and be freed and be saved in the blood of Christ because that's the only one that can save you and that's why you're running out of time nobody knows when you're going to die you don't even know when you're going to die only God does and you're running out of time there is going to have to be a time where you die and you face God it doesn't matter if it's tonight it doesn't matter if it's five seconds every second that you have is just another opportunity for him showing his mercy you're going to have to die all of us are going to die and when we die we're going to have to face the king we're going to have to give an account and that could be tomorrow that could be whenever you could have a heart attack you get in a car accident and this is the gospel coming to you God trying to knock on your heart, say, come to me, but he's not going to force himself on you. This is your chance. You don't know when you're going to die. 
And when you die, you're going to have to give an account for your sins. And if you don't have the blood of Christ, you will have to pay those wages. It's pretty gross and pretty embarrassing. Pray that you would repent. But, you know, that's this world. They'll just like to show their, their privates on this chat app because there's no self-value in it anymore. And that's, that's what's sad. And Christ will be there to show you self-value, be there to change you. And that's just embarrassing. I don't know why anybody would want to show that. And we can be saved. We can be saved if we give in to God. Not even on the chat apps can you get away from him. And that's the, that's the beauty of it. Have fun just sitting there stroking your little meat. It's embarrassing. Hey, what do you do on Saturday? What's your life? Oh, I actually go on the chat apps. And instead of actually doing something with my life, instead of actually giving in to God, I go on the chat apps and I watch porn and I give in to sin instead of actually doing something and being saved. So when you want to embrace sin, want to go after lust, and then when you die and you face it, embrace it. There's going to be nothing left to say. Embrace it then. They're so happy, so prideful, so ready, so eager to go after sin. Hate the message of the gospel so that when you die and you face God, embrace it then. And they, they won't, though. They won't. But he's right there. He's right there. It says, come to me, all of you who are heavy laden and burdened. I will give you rest because there's only true rest found in God. And that's why we have the law, because we all fall short. It's Christ who came to fulfill that law, but we don't have to be under the law anymore. Romans chapter 6, verse 14 explains to us that Christ fulfilled that law, but we don't have to be under that law anymore. We're under grace because the laws for the sinners, murder, stealing. We all fall short of it, but we don't have to be under that anymore. We go after grace if we give in to Christ, if we believe, because we're saved by grace through the faith. So it's just by believing. If we believe, if we call out to him, if we accept him, we will be saved. And that's what it comes down to. That's what it comes down to. You're going to have to die. There is going to be a time where you die. You will have to stand in front of your creator and give an account for everything. Don't think that this life is just for you to do whatever and that there's no consequences, because if that's the case that you want to go with, the guy down the street who hurts little kids and touches little kids is no better than you but that's false because christ proved that and you can give in to him if you believe if you accept him if you call out to him you will be saved you will be saved but we're running out of time we're running out of time the wrath of god is right around the corner you're going to have to give an account for your sins but if you accept and believe in christ call out to christ the blood of christ will wash you will make you white as snow and you will be forgiven all you have to do is just humble yourself just ask for forgiveness lord forgive me and you will be saved you will be forgiven but you just have to seek it yourself you're running out of time God bless you.